from member states to EU Commission. We had hoped to get uh, a good presentation from the soil health law proposal, but as uh, Claire mentioned, it is not yet there, it's coming in July. So anyway, discussing the newest insights on certifications of carbon removal is certainly equally um, important. Julia Volpi, uh, you are here, policy officer at European Commission since long time, Digi Klima is it now? Please take the floor and we have the opportunity to ask questions after your presentation. Very good. Off you go. Thank you very much. Thanks to um, EGP Soil and uh, the Latvian uh, University for um, the invitation. I'm very happy to uh, address this audience also both uh, uh, in the room and online. Uh, to present um, the one of the policy impact uh, that has been mentioned um, in the in presentation by by Claire, uh, the EU the Commission proposal for a regulation on carbon removal certification, and uh, while we presenting this uh, we've presented this proposal already um, back in November uh, last year, and we are currently in the process. I think it's working. No. Okay. Yes. Sure. That might be better. Yes. Um, so carbon removals, um, as we as we um, have a very uh, significant objective of uh, achieving carbon neutrality, net carbon neutrality by 2050. Uh, of course, uh, the first and foremost uh, um, important priority is to reduce emissions. But at the same time, as you can see from this slide, um, as we move forward towards uh, 2040, when emissions uh, from uh, the power and industrial sectors will have declined significantly, uh, there are still uh, emissions that uh, are hard to abate in the system, uh, including from the agriculture sector. And therefore, we'll need by 2050 to uh, double, roughly double the um, amount of uh, carbon removals. Uh, the amount of uh, atmospheric carbon that we can uh, capture and store uh, in different medium uh, in order to achieve the objective of climate neutrality. And uh, <clears throat> in fact, as part of um, the, uh, the, actually in the slides that Claire presented, was missing the LULUCF regulation, which is a very important uh, um, uh, regulation that was adopted, officially adopted. Uh, um, and enter into force uh, uh, in in, in uh, last, last month, um, which for the first time is setting a EU-wide objective, binding objective uh, of 310 million uh, tons of CO2 equivalent that um, is to uh, be achieved at European level with binding targets uh, by member state. Um, and this is creating all a new dynamic together with uh, um, other uh, regulations and other proposals, including the um, proposals that are currently being discussed uh, uh, in the Council and the Parliament, such as the Nature Restoration Law and the upcoming proposal on uh, soil health. Um, so it's a very exciting time to work on soil, indeed. It's becoming a, a real priority uh, because, as we heard and as your slogan, we need healthy soils for having a healthy life and uh, for having a healthy economy, particularly the land-based economy, uh, and in order to achieve our climate neutrality objective and going forward uh, by 20 and beyond the 2050. So in order to... Uh, so we have the objective, but uh, we need... The, a monitoring, reporting, verification uh, mechanism and rule to identify high quality carbon removals. Um, and one way to support the achievement of uh, uh, the LULUCF objective and going beyond um, is uh, to uh, promote carbon removals. And when we're talking about carbon removals, uh, as shown in these uh, in these slides, we're not just talking about land-based carbon removals, which is uh, dubbed as carbon farming, carbon farming, uh, covering both agriculture and forestry, but we also have permanent storage, which is um, basically industrial-based 
removals, um, whether uh, bioenergy-based uh, uh, CCS, carbon uh, capture and storage, or um, direct air capture. Uh, so these are very innovative, but as well, yet very expensive technologies uh, that we also need. And uh, the third category of carbon removals that we're looking at is carbon storage in long-lasting products, which is, again, very much... Uh, a big part of that is based uh, on, on the biomass, for example, timber used uh, in buildings. Um, so this is the three categories of, of carbon removals that we are covering under the proposal on uh, um, carbon removal certification. And here are the objective uh, of the proposal. Uh, first of all, uh, to set up rules uh, for monitoring, reporting, and verification of carbon removals, high quality carbon removals. And I'll further describe these, uh, these rules uh, in the next slides. Um, ensure that we have uh, translated these rules in, in tailored certification methodologies for those, for the different carbon removal activities that I've just presented before, uh, the spe specific methodologies, for example, to um, certify carbon removals um, from uh, agricultural practices, agroforestry, uh, wetland, uh, pitland rewetting, and so on and so forth. And we need this because we need, to, if we want to scale up the carbon removal um, market and technology, we need uh, investment. And investment is not going to be mobilized if there's no certainty about the credibility of carbon removals. So there is a big um, uh, lack of trust right nowadays in the market on what are carbon removals, whether they're additional, whether they're long term, whether they support our sustainability goals. And we will do that through harmonized uh, uh, market condition and market rules. And here, you have basically the main four blocks of or pillars of, uh, if you want, of the regulation that is being currently under negotiation in the Parliament and in the Council, uh, with uh, two with with um, the quality criteria to identify what are quality, high quality carbon removals, and the certification rules to make sure that there is a certification process with ensure the compliance with those quality criteria. So let's go more in detail and look at this um, um, and how, how this regulation basically works. This is a summary of the carbon removal certification proposal. Uh, there are four quality criteria. Um, the quantification, need to make sure that we quantify carbon removals in an accurate and conservative way. Conservative way. We only certify carbon removals which are additional to business as usual. They are kept um, uh, and stored for a long term, and they support other sustainability objectives. So, in particular, biodiversity con uh, conservation. Uh, in order to operationalize uh, and ensure um, harmonize the certification across Europe, uh, as we already heard, the Commission has established a expert group which will support the Commission to develop um, uh, certification methodologies tailored to the different carbon removal activities. And uh, I will have a uh, more information in the next slides about this expert group. The commission uh, with the support of the expert group will develop uh, this, will um, uh, draft these uh, uh, certification methodologies once the regulation is adopted and therefore we have the mandate to do so through delegated acts, through secondary legislation. And, um, and then, of course, uh, we need to ensure a third party verification of the compliance with the quality criteria. So we will uh, rely on certification schemes that are recognized, approved by the Commission against uh, uh, important, a important set of uh, uh, standards to make sure that they're credible, transparent, and uh, robust. And um, the certification registries uh, uh, will be set up by certification schemes to um, um, gather all the information uh, of the certification process, including, including the final uh, certified uh, carbon removal units, which are basically the objective of all this process. Um, so the slides here shows the long-term, um, the high quality criteria uh, on carbon removals. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we need to know how much we are uh, absorbing, how much we are storing, 
um, how much we are removing from the atmosphere and we're capturing for long term. Uh, well, this is additional uh, to business as usual. Uh, so the carbon removals are, um, the, we call it the net climate uh, carbon removal benefit is calculated against a baseline. Uh, and the baseline will, set up, will be set up by the commission uh, in the certification methodologies. The idea is that we will compare the carbon removals of a specific carbon removal activity against uh, basically the uh, best in, in the class so that we, we ensure that this is a real additional action. Um, and, uh, and the carbon removals have to be maintained over the long term. So there will be rules about liability in case of reversal of the carbon removals and uh, on the monitoring of the car stored carbon removals. And also minimum sustainability requirements, the carbon removal activities needs to be met, uh, needs to be um, uh, complied with uh, in order to ensure that, uh, for example, in the, in the carbon farming world, carbon removals support our biodiversity objectives. And when, <clears throat> of course, the, the criteria are very important, but it is important and, uh, to have a credible certification process. So the, the regulation uh, and the implementation of the criteria will rely on uh, independent, independent uh, certification schemes. Um, here we build very much on the um, model already applied over the last uh, uh, 10 plus years uh, in the area of renewable energy. You might, know, might be uh, familiar with that where the commission already recognized certification schemes for um, demonstrating sustainability of, uh, of uh, different biomass and bioenergy. In this case, uh, mm, the certification schemes will be recognized by the commission, as I said. Uh, they can be either public or market-based, but they all need to meet the same uh, standards in terms of uh, third party auditing, credibility and transparency and stakeholder involvement, of course, very important. Um, and the very important issue is the certification registries. So all the information should be um, uh, up available, publicly available to all stakeholders on uh, all the information regarding the um, certification process, the certification audits and the certified carbon removal units. So this scheme is in fact uh, uh, aims to support carbon removals uh, uptake, uh, which then could be used um, either by um, member states uh, in case they want to do auctions or they want to um, create uh, support uh, through financial instruments, uh, uh, the development of renewables uh, of carbon removals, or uh, by European um, uh, regulations in the futures uh, that might um, uh, further create uh, markets uh, and mandates for carbon removals. And that's how it works, just to give you a picture of, uh, of uh, how the certification schemes uh, uh, will work as based on the commission proposal with the commission uh, developing the tailored certification methodologies uh, through secondary legislation with the assistance of the expert group and recognizing the certification schemes, the key role of certification schemes to oversight, oversee the implementation of uh, the requirements set out in the regulation and uh, uh, also oversee um, the um, operators, basically, which are the uh, actors in the field can be land uh, uh, managers, uh, can be industrial uh, operators that uh, uh, will carry out uh, activities to uh, increase the uh, removal of uh, uh, atmospheric carbon. But of course, this is just one first step of a broader uh, policy to promote carbon removals. Uh, as I said, the, the first step is to make sure that we have a methodology and we have rules to measure, to uh, report and verify high quality carbon removals. But it, we get a lot of questions. So is this going to be uh, the only tool to promote the upscale of carbon removals? No, certainly not. Um, we have um, um, important review clauses in the EU legislation under the LULUCF 
on the role of uh, um, carbon storage in products and potentially also carbon farming. In 2026, the Commission will have to re um, assess whether um, such a um, carbon removals should be integrated, uh, uh, in particular in LULUCF uh, uh, regulation. And when it comes to permanent removals, so in removals from industrial activities, there there is also a requirement under the uh, European uh, Emission Trading Scheme in 2026 to revise, assess the pro and cons and the possibility and challenges of uh, creating integrating car permanent carbon removals under the ETS or a separate mechanism. And then uh, there is all the voluntary uh, market uh, um, currently uh, supporting different emission reductions or carbon removals. Uh, this is, a, by definition, a voluntary market. It's not being regulated yet, but uh, you may have heard the Commission uh, uh, just um, at the beginning of this year presented a proposal on green claims, a directive on green claims, which will require in the future, once it's adopted, um, that uh, green claims made on the voluntary market will need to meet uh, minimum uh, standards for credibility. And when we'll come to carbon removals, they will refer to the uh, definition and methodologies developed under the rec carbon removal certification uh, proposal in order to make sure that uh, whether it, under private or under voluntary or mandated uh, uh, instruments, we are going to support only credible and additional and long-term carbon removals. That's the objective in order to contribute to, to uh, the different targets at European level and uh, ultimately to the goal of uh, climate neutrality. Um, last slide uh, is to um, present just to, uh, in a snapshot to um, give you um, an overview of uh, the work program of the expert group. We've uh, um, uh, gathered uh, uh, an expert group uh, of uh, 70 um, leading um, uh, experts on carbon removals, uh, representing all different types of stakeholders, um, including a lot of links, links with the research community uh, to advise uh, and assist the Commission in developing certification methodologies on carbon removals. Uh, and on the 21st, 22nd of June, we will have uh, a meeting on carbon farming certification methodologies. All these um, meetings are uh, web streamed, so uh, all very transparent, like a, a bit this conference, there is a possibility to ask questions. So I invite you all to um, check the, the website and uh, and uh, subscribe and um, register for for this meeting and we will uh, um, in that meeting today meeting um, revise map the existing um, knowledge on how to certify uh, carbon farming and um, my last uh, message to you is that we will need the support from this uh, initiative and from your projects to develop uh, um, MRV uh, systems and protocols and rules. Um, the, the objective is that uh, next year we will uh, um, start drafting the uh, legislative uh, um, secondary legislation. So start developing and send us uh, certification methodologies and certification approaches because that's what we need in order to further promote carbon removals at European level. Thank you very much. Um, I can imagine that you have a lot of questions, but as I am also the controller of our, of our time schedule, there is one um, very technical question. I give you the floor, Baiba, to uh, read uh, aloud what uh, question there was. Okay, thank you very much, Julia, for the presentation. Uh, we have a question from Michael Zimmerman online uh, about how long must the time period be to qualify as a long-term storage? Okay, uh, the um, proposals uh, does not set uh, the long term. This will be defined in the certification methodologies because that will vary the, between different types of uh, carbon removals. We don't know yet is the answer, isn't it? <laughs> the answer is there's no one, one single answer that fits all. Okay, okay. Uh, one more 
technical question, I can uh, announce that uh, Julio is also a member of the debate later this afternoon. Um, technical or otherwise you have to remember your questions for the debate. I, sorry, <laughs> remember your questions for later. Yeah, thank you very much for the presentation regarding the quality criteria. I missed the leakage, the spillover effect. If you put all the all on one field and the other field might lose in organic carbon. What about that? Indeed, leakage is covered under the quantification. So here I just present the headlines. Uh, but if you read the proposal, leakage is one of the elements that has to be ad addressed under the quantification. And we have a methodology and we'll further develop a, a specific technical certification rules, how to address that point. So it is uh, taken care of. Short question, last one. Hi, uh, Eric Secha, senior scientist in Ray in France. Uh, I have a question why, uh, when talking about climate neutrality, uh, are only carbon storage effects or greenhouse gases emissions considered and not biogeophysical effects like albedo changes and the changes in energy partitioning because it, it has as much impact on climate uh, with land management changes than carbon storages or uh, greenhouse gases emissions. So I, I find it very abusive term, uh, climate neutrality. So do you have an, an explanation for that? So we, we take the climate neutrality from the climate, European climate law, um, and that's, that's basically the, the metrics that we are considering. Other issues are important, but we need to measure something at the end, and that's been the key indicator. Yes. That need, this needs further discussion, I think. Thank you very much, Mr. Volpi, for your presentation.